Neutron launchers are a meta. A statement made from a bygone era of a weapon with all the advantages, all the abilities, with no weaknesses whatsoever. That is the old neutron launcher. The one weapon to truly rule them all. The best way to win is to just have more of them. That's it. That's literally the combat system in a nutshell. Which led to a death stack simulator where the bigger number will always win. No matter how you twist it, if you have flash ships, you just lose. Combat was nothing more than an extension of an economic war, as the one that can build and sustain more ships will win every single time. There was no variance in this rule. It was absolute. There were only two viable designs, being the Neutron Battleship and the Neutron Destroyer. But that all changed in the rework. Suddenly, an infinite number of designs can work and combat stop being just an extension of the economic war. You can easily be outnumbered and still win. There was counterplay. The question is how? And why? What the heck happened to make such a difference even possible? First off, we need to talk about the insane damage per shot and insane damage bonuses. The late hit kiting weapons are inferior to instant hit kiting weapons. We all know this, right? Well, think of that, but a hundred times worse because the very existence of neutrons obliterated any chance for missiles or carriers to ever be usable because they just die before dealing any damage. And getting close doesn't do anything either because guess what? There was no minimum range. That wasn't a feature yet. Oh, it even has the most range out of everything in the game besides for X-Slot weapons while being infinitely more spammable because back then, it's still an L-Slot weapon. Ponder about what I just said and you'd probably think to yourself, Maybe this needs to be nerfed, said nobody ever in Paradox for the years this weapon reigned. It was actually comical just how strong the weapon is. If you get this weapon earlier than someone else, it's an auto GG. You just win. There was literally nothing they could do. Even Corvettes, the natural enemy of neutrons, don't work because torpedoes back then didn't deal bonus damage. And again, back then, neutrons had no minimum range. The absurd prospect of combining this with the picket computer for free tracking make it possible to obliterate 90% of Asian Corvettes in point-blank range while inflicting insane losses due to the insane bonus damage to hull. And don't think this only applies to small ships because the damage is so high that it also works on bigger ones. Since they deal so much damage, even if you're running hit and run with tricksters, you'll still just lose everything anyway as a ship needs to survive a hit when below 50% health to even have a chance to disengage. This ended up making everyone and I mean everyone go no retreat no matter what they're doing because there was literally no point not to. If your ships are all gonna die anyway when a battle is lost, just go no retreat. What's the difference? Surprise surprise, this made the issue of a death stack simulator even worse. Death balls can wreck any Anything and everything without giving any chance of a comeback. There was no guerrilla warfare, no in-depth ship designs, positioning barely mattered, and worst of all, star bases were more of a joke back then than they are now, as the bonuses specifically hit star bases the hardest, making defensive star bases comically bad in all aspects. It all culminated in the creation of the true meta mono fleet that basically just beats everything. Everything. The triple chance to hit neutron battleships with a tracking titan on top. Even the closest counter, which isn't just more neutrons by the way, just gets as decimated, leaving any room for variants basically gone. Can you guess what it is? Yep. It's the Torpedo Corvette spam. 90 to 100% of the time, it's a terrible idea. Because even 90% evasion doesn't save you against max level sensors with triple chance to hit. The tracking time isn't even needed. It's just there for good measure to look pretty and seal the deal. How can this be? It's the damn doctrines again. You can just switch out of no retreat into hit and run. Lose very little ships and in exchange, you can obliterate half 
half or more of the enemy fleet. It's just not fair. Just by switching a single doctrine, the only fringe counter becomes completely useless. That is just how broken it is. Now, let's talk about the cost. You only need level 4 lasers to get to the neutron weapon line and just destroyers to use them. You're pretty much set for the rest of the game after that. It's actually a legit strategy to completely rush neutron launchers or if you're stingy, just proton launchers. And just shut down your tech right after to reassign everything into alloys. The death stack game is heavily emphasized here because more alloys mean bigger death stacks. There was literally no reason to go for any other weapon once you get them either. So there is literally no downsides to this strategy. I was talking about tech costs, but this also applies for the alloy cost for the weapon itself because for some odd reason, this thing does more damage per alloy spent than anything else, which is just even more insane now in hindsight. Most of the community wasn't even aware of just how broken this weapon is until a few years after the weapon was introduced. The fact that it flew under the radar for so long is impressive in of itself. Define coincidence perhaps? Or just collective stupidity? We will never know. But now, the weapon has some of the worst performance ever seen. Only ever used in fringe anti-meta designs due to the fact that it's now in G-slot purgatory. Everything and I mean everything is basically half. It's basically the equivalent in damage to a normal M-slot while costing the same as an advanced L-slot weapon. This is the biggest nerf the weapon could ever get. Not only is the alloy per damage terrible, it's also relative. Completely useless against anything smaller than cruisers, while needing the support of kinetic artillery or any kinetic weapon really, as now its pathetic damage would get absorbed by shields completely. Not to mention the range and accuracy reductions on top of the introduction of minimum range and firing arcs. I can't understate just how harsh the nerfs are. Sure, they do bonus damage to bigger targets, but that's before you look at how the base damage is barely even 3 per day. Being a G-slot also nuked its spammability as only frigates and cruisers can have them. Frigates being a terrible ship type and cruisers being an inefficient G-slot ship. It's just just tragic, really. Now, in fairness, even the nerf version isn't as bad as the old disruptors, which are just plainly terrible in all aspects. So, how can the new neutrons be used? The current meta revolves around exclusively using big ships like cruisers, and we can take advantage of this, specializing cruisers in obliterating big ships with kinetic artillery to neutrons and nothing else. Why does this work? Because now, both weapons have the same range, which means the kinetic artillery will fire first due to its lower shadow wind-up time, which is directly related to the weapon reload. This allows for the enemy shields to be obliterated first, allowing for the neutrons to eat up the enemy armor and hull. The focus being on the damage to hull. It has the same attributes of the old neutrons in being extremely extremely deadly, not allowing much if at all to disengage once the hull is hit. Do be careful of the minimum range combined with piss poor tracking and accuracy. You will suck against small evasive ships, and unlike before, there is nothing you can do, as ticket computers will tend to get your ships too close to the enemy, resulting in minimum range kicking in and preventing your weapons from firing in the first place. As a rule of thumb, if the enemy is using mostly big ships, use neutrons. If they aren't, avoid them like the plague. The irony here is in how disruptors and neutrons basically switch places in the meta. Before, neutrons were meta-defining, while disruptors are just plain bad. Now, it's as if the roles of these two are reversed. Even then, the current disruptors doesn't even come close to what neutrons used to be. Using disruptors mean you win every battle, but in 
inflict zero losses. If you don't catch the enemy retreat when the ships are damaged, things can get ugly real fast. Compared to, well, just winning every battle and inflicting annihilation every single time. That was just how broken old neutrons were. There were no asymmetric balance like it is now. Just one weapon and one weapon only. That is the legacy of the neutron launcher, the absolute and supreme ruler of the universe. At least for a time.